the storm surrounding Enzo Fernandez has been going on for just over a week now since Argentina lifted the Copa America and the infamous live stream where Enzo Fernandez, along with other teammates, were singing and having fun surrounding a song which most people around the world consider to be discriminatory, racist, and of course, for professional football players, completely and utterly inappropriate. A number of the players alleged to have joined in with that song have actually played at some level or have played at some level with the persons mentioned in that charm. Plus, a lot play with other individuals from similar backgrounds where they may have Caribbean or African descent, but now play for a European country. Some claim that the reaction to this was overblown and was all about trying to dismantle Chelsea's season. I don't think it was that in any capacity. I've seen far too many Chelsea fans frustrated at this, wanting answers, wanting a reaction to just blindly state or claim that this is about trying to create disharmony at Chelsea. I think that's a very disrespectful uh, take and view upon what is a very serious situation. Now, before we get onto Chelsea and the problems surrounding this, is Enzo Fernandez is now embroiled in not additional accusations, but his apology is being called into question. So he attended a game at River Plate where he was serenaded and given a hero's welcome. Bit one being a River Plate boy, two the national success that he has been so heavily involved with, lifting the World Cup and the Copa America in the space of 18 months. So a hero's welcome was very much expected. But what we have seen is Enzo come out and apologise for the language used, the song that was sung, his unprofessional and disrespectful behaviour, and has stated that this song and its message is not a reflection of who I am as a person. And I think in life sometimes we don't, account for apologies enough. I think in life at times, somebody makes a mistake, somebody does something wrong, someone commits a crime, somebody breaks a rule, whatever it may be, they they apologize. And we have this sort of stance of don't care, you still did it, your apology means nothing. And I don't like that, that, that perspective. If you apologize and you're genuine, then forgiveness should begin from that point. The problem now for Enzo Fernandez is his reaction to what happened at the game. And I'm going to play this for you now, where you hear a section of the crowd reportedly singing this song in support of Enzo Fernandez. Now, I will say it's not the entire crowd. It doesn't sound like everybody in there is singing the song, but it is still a big proportion. And we spoke about this on the Top 6 show a few weeks ago. What he's done is wrong. I think all the Chelsea fans we've had on have said he's got to face whatever punishment is coming his way. However, and this is a really important element in my humble opinion. He had government officials and senior sports ministers, etc., etc., come out and in Argentina and defend him. And not just defend him, defend their entire nation. And basically said, no colonialist country is going to tell us what is and isn't offensive, what is and isn't right. We back all of our players. They can sing and do what they want. There's nothing wrong with this song. And they've doubled down. Enzo Fernandez has not come out and said anything. He has now gone to a hero's welcome where these fans have serenaded him. And then a significant percentage of that same audience has now sung that same very song. That Enzo Fernandez has told you and me and the world, and more importantly, his teammates, that he doesn't like, that he knows he's wrong, that he uses incorrect language. And as of now, of me recording this content, he hasn't said anything about it. He didn't ask the crowd to stop. He didn't say, look, can I have the microphone? Can I tell the, tell the crowd that this song is wrong? We need to do better. He's told us he believes that. But he hasn't said anything. There hasn't been a social media post to state that although he was grateful for the welcome, we have to start doing better, singing about 
the skin color and the nationality and the background, any of these things, of any football player, it's never justified, no matter what's going on. He hasn't done that. So the question now is, what message does this send to his Chelsea teammates that were heavily frustrated with what he did? What message does this send to FIFA and the Premier League and Chelsea Football Club of whom are all investigating this situation at the same time. We've seen football players banned for games because of homophobic tweets that they sent when they were children. Not as adults and as professional footballers, but as children. We have seen them apologise, take their punishment and move on. How would that apology then look if they were then attending homophobic rallies? Or how would that... Uh, that, that, that apology look if there was chance related to that supporting that individual that were then not condemned. I remember seeing this once when Luis Suarez, uh, sorry, when, when, when Patrice Evra played back at Anfield when he was a West Ham player. And as he came on from the bench, almost instantly, a, a small percentage, yes, but a horrible percentage of the Anfield crowd that day started singing their Luis Suarez chant. Now, again, in a court of law, you could say, well, we weren't singing about Evra or supporting racism or supporting the player that was convicted of it. But you don't need to be a rocket scientist to understand it. If whenever Harlan's father is seen, if as soon as he's seen at Old Trafford that the Roy Keane song gets sung, that is fans celebrating the knee injury that Roy Keane inflicted upon him. And... I think we're all very aware of that. The fans that sung this song have essentially said, don't have a go at Enzo. We're behind you, mate. There's nothing wrong with that song. And I think at this particular juncture, Enzo has got to stand up and make himself be counted. Enzo has got to stand up and say, I do not endorse this. I do not back this. The same as any football player, whether it be Luis Suarez from the past, whether it be a player banned for something that's homophobic, somebody who's banned for something that's Islamophobic. Like, I'll give you an example. If a football player today got in trouble for tweeting something or saying something or doing something that was Islamophobic, and then you had Tommy Robertson and all these, and all these goons come out and say, we stand with you, Joe Bloggs. I would expect that footballer to then say, don't associate yourself with me. I don't want your support. I would expect him or her to then remove themselves. We're not, this is a real serious matter that impacts people's lives on a daily basis. And for me, the question outside of this now remains, what do Chelsea do about it? Does he have a future at their club? Will the players accept his apology after this latest incident? Or on the other hand, and I want to be open to discussion on this, do you see it a different way? Do you see this as, and some of you have expressed this, and I'd love to see your comments again. Say it with chest if you're going to say it. That this is a nothing burger. That people are overreacting. That there shouldn't be this reaction to this circumstance. I'd love to get your views. I'd love to ascertain your opinions. Leave us your comments below. Make sure you're subscribing to the Football Terrace. Until next time, take care. Goodbye, God bless. And we'll see you soon. Peace.